Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number 9 in the series where I'm learning how to use my CNC machine. It's a Shark HD 510 and I've never used one before until this build here. And I've never used the software that controls it either. But I'm learning this process and I'm taking you all on my journey. So I've definitely had my ups and downs in this whole learning experience. Uh, I've made a few screw-ups that I've had to go back and redo, and I've learned an awful lot about that machine and the software that, that controls it. And it's been a really cool journey. I could definitely see where that CNC machine is going to have a place in my shop from here forward. So if you're wondering whether or not to get a CNC machine, you'd like a little glimpse into what it looks like for someone else to get one and learn how to use it, you might want to stick around and check this out. Anyway, let's get rolling with the video. So if you watched last week's video, you'll know that I screwed up cutting this thing out and I ran the uh, spindle collet down on top of my head plate right here and here. Uh, but as you can see, I fixed it. I couldn't take it, so I went ahead and I milled the top off. I set it back up on my jig. I milled the uh, headstock plate off. I made another one up. See, I got it laminated. I got a piece of walnut on top, two pieces of maple, and a piece of uh, purple dyed wood in the middle of that, the veneers. Anyway, so I redid that and glued it back on and then recut out the uh, recut out the rest of the stuff on the face here. And so we are all fixed and good to go and ready to go on to the next stage. So as you can also see, uh, you know, I cut this truss rod in uh, the other day with the uh, tool paths I did on my CNC machine. And I had to go back with the chisel and I just kind of squared up the ends a little bit and, and it got that fitting and it fits great, fits like a champ. And uh, anyway, we're now ready to move on to the next stage, which is going to be getting our fingerboard ready. So in getting this fingerboard ready, I'm going to use a combination of both the CNC machine and some of my traditional tools the way I've always done it. Uh, I think you could do everything I need to do on the CNC machine, but I lack an experience in doing some things like the uh, radiusing of the fretboard. And so I'm going to use my standard tool I've always used, which is a router jig that you'll see here in a minute. And, uh, and I'm also going to cut the slots in my traditional way with uh, my, my uh, Stumac uh, fret slotting blade here on my table saw. Uh, they do make a, a, a 23 thousandths of an inch spiral um, cutting bit to do frets with. I don't have one of those yet. I don't know that I'm comfortable enough yet with my skills in laying everything out. To, uh, to accurately cut that. So I'm going to do that in my standard way too, where I'm going to use my Stumac uh, fret slotting jig right here. So that's going to be done in the standard way. But the three things I'm going to do on the CNC machine is I want to first surface this off. Now as you can see, I have laminates. I glued on three veneers under this thing, which will match the veneers in the headstock, and I think it'll look pretty cool. But that uh, end result made this a little bit thicker than what I want it for right now. This is uh, right now 5 sixteenths of an inch thick, and I want to get it down a little closer to a quarter inch. So I'm going to do a couple of surfacing tool paths on top of this first. I'm going to take off five thousandths of an inch at a time until I get this down to a thickness I'm good with, which would be just a little over a quarter inch. And that's also going to ensure that the top of this thing is perfectly flat uh, for when I go to radius it. Then I'm going to take it over onto my uh, fret slotting uh, jig on my table saw and I'm going to go ahead and slot up all the frets. Then I'm going to take it back to the CNC machine and I've got a little design going in here at the 12th fret. I'm going to cut that in as well as then cut out the perimeter of, this, uh, of the fretboard. Now I'm going to cut the length of the fretboard uh, to precisely what it's supposed to be. Uh, but the width, I'm going to leave it a little bit wide. I'm going to leave it about a sixteenth of an inch wide. So when I glue this onto the neck, I could do it the way I've always done it. I'll use a flush trim bit to trim up the edges so it, it perfectly, matches the, uh, perfectly matches the neck. Now I know the CNC machine is perfectly capable of uh, cutting it to the exact width and everything. But there again, I'm just not as comfortable with that uh, yet myself. So I'm going to do some of these things in the old fashioned way and use the CNC uh, for some of the things. And as I learn and progress, I'm going to use the CNC for more of, uh, more of these fingerboard operations. So anyway, let's go ahead and get rolling with that. I'm going to get this down on the CNC machine. We're going to surface it off. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to drop back and show you the uh, video clips of me putting the veneer on the back of that uh, fingerboard. 
I've got two pieces of maple veneer and one piece of that purple dyed wood. Not exactly sure what the wood is, but it was, uh, it was dyed purple and I thought that would go well with the purple heart in the neck. I bought my veneers from a place called veneersupplies.com. And there's some good folks over there. I bought several uh, packs of veneer from them. Very good stuff. And I bought the glue too from them, which I'm using Ultra Cat, and that's a specially formulated glue. It's a powder you mix with water and it's specially formulated for uh, veneers like this. So I've got my little silicone glue spreader there. It helps get it on the right thickness. And I've got little pins in the end too to help, uh, help that veneer stay aligned uh, before I get it clamped. You gotta work fast, that uh, UltraCat glue gives you about 10 minutes uh, working time before it starts to set up. And that's about it, then I just clamp it up. But I'm clamped down on top of a piece of granite that is uh, really straight and it helps, just helps keep everything nice and straight. But that's about it. Okay, so now that I have that all out of the clamps and cleaned up, you know, joined up the edges and cleaned up the glue and everything, I'm getting ready to put that down on my CNC machine and do the surfacing path. But before I do that, I want to get a very precise center line marked on each end of that uh, fretboard so I could use it during the other CNC operations I'm doing. So I'm working here a little bit with my, uh, <clears throat> my scribe gauge and everything and my center line rulers to find a perfect, uh, perfect center line that I could mark on the very ends. And then uh, once I surface off the top, of course, that line will be gone off of the top, but I'll still have it on my ends. And I could use that throughout the rest of the process. So I'm just gluing it down on top of my CNC machine using the uh, double tape trick. And I've got it up against that fence. That fence is a real time saver for me in getting things lined up uh, correctly on the CNC machine. That's a one inch surfacing bit. It's an Amana surfacing bit. And I'll just take off, uh, I think I'm taking off five thousandths at a pass. And I'll run a couple passes just to get it down to the right thickness. Okay, so I've got my Stumac uh, fret, <clears throat> fret marking gauge or fret cutting gauge. I'm going to set it on the fender 25 and a half inch scale length. And, uh, and I've got my nut is up on this end right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my fretboard because I'll be cutting about a half inch away from each of these notches. So I'm going to start by setting my fretboard up face down, of course, right there in line with that. So my first cut, which would be the nut, would be around a half inch off of this end. And then it'll pick up the rest of the uh, the rest of the frets as I go along. So I'm using a the Stumac uh, fret slotting blade, which is a blade that cuts twenty thousandths of an inch. And I set that blade to where the the full tooth is basically above my jig, and that cuts about the right depth. Then I just go along. I have a half inch uh, reference line, a half inch off of the blade that I line up with each slot in the guide and it comes out really well. Okay, so the next thing I gotta do is I want to, uh, I need to place this now back onto the CNC machine uh, precisely so when my end gets cut, it gets cut right up here at the nut line and this end down here is gonna get cut somewhere past the 22nd fret which is that guy right there. And the only way I could figure out how to do this is to find the 12th fret, because I also have to cut my little uh, design in here at the 12th fret. Uh, I did this drawing, this is the V-carve drawing that I did, and I determined that the 12th fret is uh, 3.4732, which is basically 3 and 15 30 seconds from the 12th fret to the center line. Um, so I think if I reestablish my new center line at 3.4732 off of the 12th fret, 
in my mind it should lay out everything on the neck properly and I should get the proper cut at the nut line and the proper cut at this end and hopefully I'll get my little design here right at the 12th fret so it's kind of risky using uh, a CNC for part of this and regular tools for the other part which is why next time I'll get that little bit and I'll cut my fret slots with it but this is the way I'm going to do it this one so I have to find the 12th fret so now I've got to come back three and 15 30 seconds from there so this spot right here that will be my center line reference point let's check that again okay that is right on my little scratch mark there so I'm going to square that down the sides this now becomes my new center line okay so if I line that right up on my, uh, I center up my tool on this, I should have my uh, uh, little uh, design cut in here and the profile should cut out right, hitting the nut right on that line right there. So I'm gonna set this thing up and uh, see how we do. So using that glue trick with the tape is uh, kind of tricky because it grabs it so quick. So I always use that fence I take my time to be sure that that center line is exactly lined up where it's supposed to be and uh, then once I do I could use that push the thing up against there glue it down and then I get the fence out of the way to do my thing so now I've got to be sure that that center line is perfectly lined up and that uh, ebony is so dark down there I had to put my phone uh, light on it so I could see what I was doing to be absolutely sure that I'm lined up precisely Then I just started cutting away. Since I had that V bit in there, I went ahead and did the little uh, design first. And I just cut out the outside and I was thrilled to death to see it hit on that nut line perfectly. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased with the way that turned out. I had these little tabs on here, I wasn't really thinking about it, that I was actually cutting off all of the excess waste, so I'll just have to file those down. But uh, <clears throat> the width, I set the width, I am probably just a shade, maybe a 32nd on either side wider than the fretboard, than the neck itself, which is good, that way I'll uh, route that to fit the neck perfectly. So I'm happy with that, my length looks really good, and I went ahead and I checked the length from the nut cut down to the 12th fret and because it's a 25 and a half inch scale length I should have 12 and 3 quarters and I have exactly 12 and 3 quarters right there. So I am uh, I'm pleased. I think it came out good. Now I'll set it in place based on a nut width about like so. And I'll get it glued on there. And that fit is really nice up against the nut. And the nut is also really tight against the uh, headstock. So I'm good. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready. I'm going to drill in a couple of little uh, indexing pins here and down here. I'll use for that. I'm going to use, I can use some of my side fret uh, marking, side dot fret marking material right here. That's 3 seconds of an inch. It'll fit right under the fret over here and it'll fit right under the fret over here. So anyway, that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get this thing glued on. So that side dot marking material, that, uh, that PVC rod works perfectly for little indexing pins on a fretboard because the 3 seconds diameter will get completely covered by the fret. So, and it's really easy to work with too. So I like using those. So now you can watch me put uh, way too much glue on this uh, on this fretboard. 
I try not to do too much, but as it turns out sometimes, you'll see in a second the glue dripping all down the thing. All important pulling off that piece of tape. Gosh, look at all that glue. That is way too much glue. Luckily, I could run it through the router and get rid of all that glue, and then I gotta radius the top and it'll get rid of any mess that's on there too. So anyway, so once it's set up, now remember it hadn't been radiused yet, so I could ride it uh, on the perfectly flat fretboard, run it down my router table with the flush trim bit in it, and it trims up the edges really nice. Again, like I said, I think next time I'll use the CNC for all of this, including, including cutting that out like that. But uh, as I'm learning, this is the way I decided to do it. Anyway, that's it. It's ready to get radius and get some frets in there. Well, folks, that's about it for this one. As you can see, I've gotten a little further along uh, since I finished this video. I've radiused it and done the frets and done my little logo here in epoxy. You'll get to see all that next week as well as me carving this neck too, so which I do by hand, because I just love doing that. Anyway, that CNC machine, I'm really digging it. It's really, uh, a, a, the more I use it, the more comfortable I become with it, the more I understand its capabilities, and uh, I'm really liking it. And I hope somebody got a little something out of this. Anyway, uh, hope to see you all in the next one. In the meantime, God bless you, and we'll see you all next week.